welcome to the class english class i am r sucharita government degree college kharatabad hyderabad department of english a warm welcome to the students of ba bsc bcom first year so today we are going to do uh, the first lesson of the second semester that is a visit of charity which is on page number 84 85 86 87 etc so a uh, visit of charity the first lesson it is uh, written by eudora welty so first we are <coughs> sorry <coughs> we are going to do pre reading questions so the pre reading questions is the pre reading activity the pre day the pre reading activity Uh, usually it is done by the students so the teacher is going to question and the students ought to answer so this uh, all this uh, pre reading activities you have done in the first semester so now we are going to do the second semester pre reading activity i am going to question you there are only three questions and uh, whenever i question please do answer so uh, it is the uh, activity where a teacher will be questioning and eliciting answers from the students so the first question is have you ever tried to help someone in need why or why not yeah uh, i helped someone in need like uh, the poor people and the visually challenged people and i like to help them very much good describe your relationship with your grandparents grandparents i have one grandma maternal side and one grandpa he has expired when i was in 6th grade and when it comes to my maternal grandmother she is so loving she is so caring and uh, she buys me many things lots of things which i like and she always uh, tells me bedtime stories she is so fun and she gives me everything what all i need and she cares me when i'm sick or i'm not feeling well good very good so have you ever visited a home for the aged No, I haven't visited yet. So, how did you feel when you interacted with the elderly people? Elderly people, yeah, I really like their way of talking, and I really love to speak with them. I speak very in a respectful manner with. Them. Okay good So there is the pre reading activity now we are going to learn about the author that is Eudora Welty <clears throat> So Eudora Welty she was born in the year 1909 and she died in 2001 Now we are living in 2021 so it is Twenty uh, years passed away. Yudhara Welty passed away for twenty years, and she was an American short story writer. So she belongs to the country, America, and she is a short story writer. She writes very short stories and short stories. Her literary career took off with the publication of her first story. death of a traveling salesman in a literary magazine she was a prolific author and wrote stories in multiple genres her stories often portray relationships between individuals and their communities welty won numerous awards for her work indulging including sorry the pulitzer prize in 1973 for her novel the optimist daughter So as I told you that she is an American short story writer, and she started her literary career, and uh, she took off with the publication of her first story. Her first story, 
uh, the her first publication is death of a traveling salesman so you have to remember this and you have to write when you write about eudora welty that is the introduction when you write about the author you have to write the first uh, her first uh, story or her first publication name uh, death of a traveling salesman and you have to underline it in a literary magazine so this was published in a literary magazine she was a prolific author and wrote stories in multiple genres so genre means uh, type the class or the kind okay so multiple kinds or varieties of stories she has re- she has written so many uh, multiple genres that is kinds or varieties she has uh, written that is why she is called as a prolific author her stories often portray relationships between individuals and their communities so she has a very close relationship with the society by this line we can understand she has relationships with individuals and with the communities or with the society so that is why when she is having close relationships so she uh, turned them or she made those relationships into stories so like that with her experiences with the communities and with the individuals she started with those experiences she started writing stories so welty won numerous awards for her work so because she was a, a diligent writer very uh, uh, that is she is a talented writer welty so that is why she won numerous awards it is not one or two awards but it is written as numerous awards number of awards uh, she won for the work which she had done writing stories so uh, including the pulitzer prize in 1973 for her novel the optimist dot so she has written the very best novel which is called as the optimist daughter so this too you have to write and underline in your introduction so she uh, she uh, won this pulitzer prize in 1973 uh, for her novel that is the optimist daughter okay so a visit of charity tells the story of 14 year old marian and her visit to an old lady's home so a visit to charity tells uh, it speaks about uh, an old uh, that is uh, it, it tells about the story of an old aged home and it especially the main character in this story is marian okay this marian is a teenage girl you can say she is 14 year old marian she is a 14 years old and her visit to an old lady's home so what does this marian do this uh, teenage girl she visits an old age home or old lady's home marian is in a youth development organization in america called campfire so this girl marian she is in a youth development organization and this youth development organization it is in it is situated in america which is called as campfire c a m p camp f i r e fire campfire and one of her duties which will earn her extra points is to visit a home for the elderly so this uh, girl that is marian a 14 year old girl if she visits uh, the uh, that is this old aged home or a home for the elderly she will be earning points or she will be gaining points if she just visits uh, the people there so during her visit she reluctantly spends time with two elderly ailing women 
So uh, this old, uh, uh, 14-year-old Marian, when she visits the home for the elderly or the old-aged home, very reluctantly, uh, that is, she doesn't like to spend time with the elderly people. She comes only to earn points. So if she just visits this home, she'll be getting or she will be earning points. So that is why very reluctantly, uh, she spends time with the two elderly people who were in that home, ailing women. So that uh, woman, they were ailing and uh, they were very sad. And uh, when we uh, look into their conditions or situations, they are very worse and they are very bad. There, uh, and discovers they live in cold, uncomfortable rooms. So as I have told you that there, there are present very worst situations and she, she discovers this Marian, she discovers that they live in very cold rooms, the, the rooms are not warm. So for the elderly or old people, so they can't bear the cold or the the chilly weather so uh, the rooms were also very very uncomfortable they were dirty and uh, these old women that too in that old age they suffer from extreme loneliness and these at this age it is like a punishment for them in that old aged home and they feel extremely lonely because actually they have to live with their children and with their grandchildren in the families. But now they are living in uh, this old age home where the situations are very worse and they feel extremely lonely. So Marian panics at the sight of their grief and instead of consoling them, please. So when Marian, uh, if she has that humanity, what she has to do when she visits the home for the elderly, she has to comfort them and she has to console them. She has to talk to them dearly and she has to listen to what they say and comfort them. But instead of doing that, Marian, she panics. That means uh, when she sees their conditions in the old aged home, she fears a lot. Okay, panic is getting scared when she sees those conditions and immediately she flees. That means she wants to escape as early as possible from there. So the story portrays how the meaning of charity has changed from caring for and trying to help others to trying to earn points or keeping up appearances. So the story clearly portrays or it depicts how the meaning of charity so what is the meaning of charity itself says that we ought to love and love is the greatest thing in this world or and in god's sight so the meaning of charity it is changing from caring so charity is nothing but caring so we mother teresa who won the Nobel Peace Prize is the best example of the of these charity institutions. She worked for the people who were lepers. So she worked for the whole, her whole life was sacrificed for the people of leprosy. So where she would, uh, with her own hands, she would wash the clothes of the uh, people who were lepers. So like that, uh, it was like that. But now uh, the meaning of charity, it is changed from caring for and trying to help others to trying to earn points. So Marian is such a girl that uh, she is panicking and she wants to, uh, she, she wants to escape from there and her motive is to earn points. That's all and nothing else, no comforting, no uh, consoling and no uh, talking with the elderly people in a merciful way. So like that, she just came to earn points and to keep up appearances. 
so the present society today is also like that so there are very few people where we can uh, count on our fingers who have the greatest quality of charity of caring and loving uh, the people especially the people who are in need like the elderly people or the people with disabilities or visually challenged etc etc as even the nurse who is expected to be compassionate actually the nurses how they should be they should be very compassionate they should be very uh, kind they should be polite and merciful who is expected to be compassionate is indifferent to the elderly women's suffering so the elderly women they are suffering in the old age home and uh, these uh, that is marian uh, she was very indifferent to the elderly women's suffering so this is the little gist of this story that is a visit of charity which is written by yudora welt so i have uh, uh, completed the about the author that is a visit of charity which is written by yudora welt and the important uh, writings which she has done and then uh, the pulitzer prize in 1973 of the optimist daughter definitely you have to mention in your introduction to get good marks so this is about the author we have done and now we are going to uh, do the glossary okay so the glossary is the first uh, question is the first word is acquaintance acquaintance means someone you have met a few times but do not know well so every day we will be meeting so many people and uh, we know their faces but we we don't know what is uh, going on or what what are the stories behind them we do not know we just know only uh, we just see their faces and we meet them that's all but we don't know each and everybody's uh, what is hidden in them so that is called as acquaintance someone you have met a few times but do not know well so i even in the classroom as uh, you all are students every day i'll be seeing your faces and i'll be meeting you and i'll be talking with you but uh, about you all i do not know very well that is uh, i don't know about your family and i don't know about your personal uh, stories or like okay so that is called as acquaintance and then ori a w r y ori means it is abnormal uh, something that is unexpected or unusual so that which is uh, that which is not normal is called as abnormal and that uh, which is uh, the unexpected or which is unusual it is called as ori a w r y then bleat b l e a t the we cry that a sheep or goat makes so uh, what do the dogs do the dogs bark we say and uh, the birds they'll be chirping c h i r p chirp the dog barks b a r k s but here the the sound which the sheep or the goat makes that is called as bleat b l e a t bleat bleat means it is the we cry that a sheep or goat makes so uh, the the sound which is made by the sheep or the goat is only called as bleat and then cameo pen c a m e o cameo pen so all these uh, glossary they are given on page number 19 in your textbook you can follow them as i teach you so cameo pen is a type of decorative ornament or brooch that contains a carving so especially these cameo pens they are worn by the women in weddings or in parties they'll be wearing sarees or they'll be, they'll be wearing the england people they will be wearing frocks so to the left side where we keep our school badge 
at that place they will be uh, keeping this cameo pin so this cameo pin it is a type of decorative ornament which is made of gold and some diamonds are kept in that and we find artificial cameo pins too so this is uh, called as brooch especially in christian weddings the christian bride she will be wearing this brooch b r o o c h that contains a carving you can see different kinds of carvings like uh, leaves and flowers etc etc on this cameo pin so cameo pin is nothing but it is a brooch b r o o c h then uh, close cut hair close cut hair means a hairstyle where the hair length is quite short so these days in the uh, in the modern uh, age we are living where the girls most of the girls more than 50% of the girls their hair style is they are not uh, uh, having very lengthy hairs but uh, their hair is uh, cut uh, quite short so the hair when it is cut quite short that uh, that is that hair style is only called as close cut hair then the next word is clutch c l u t c h clutch clutch means it is hold something tightly so something you hold in uh, in a very tight manner that is called as clutch so uh, anything uh maybe persons or things that which you hold tightly that is called as clutch then counter pain c o u n t e r p a n e counter pain counter pain is a bed spread so on the court we will be putting some bed spreads some like beds so the the thin bed spread uh, especially for the elderly people that is called as counter pain counter pain is nothing but it is a bed spread then crow c r o w crow crow is not uh, the bird here but crow the inner meaning of crow is to laugh or croak in a proud way <coughs> laughing and croaking which is done by the elderly people there in the old age home they were croaking croaking means it is laughing okay laughing or croaking in a very proud manner or proud way to gloat over someone else's misfortune so the elderly people at their age uh, they become like kids okay if, if uh, something is wrong with others in the same old age the home that is if uh, one old aged lady when she observes the old lady's misfortune what she will be doing she will be laughing or she will be croaking in a proud way so that is called as crow here and it is not a bird it is to laugh then the next word is damp d a m p damp damp means it is slightly wet especially when uh when it drizzles when when that drizzling falls on the mud what happens the mud will be slightly wet so that slightly wetness is only called as damp damp is nothing but it is slightly wet then double wrap d o u b l e double r a p wrap so double wrap means to knock on the door twice in quick succession so we to double wrap our doors especially when we are in a hurry and we when we uh, go home tired we will be double wrapping on the doors okay so so that uh, when we knock the person who is listening inside the home they'll come quickly uh, running and open the door so that is called as double wrap is nothing but to knock the door and then the next word is enormous e n o r m o u s enormous so enormous means that which is very large in size or quantity so that which is uh, very very big or very large okay if the class if the size of the class is 
250 students in just one class then how it is it is an enormous class we say that which is very large in size or quantity that is called as enormous then fogginess f o g g i n e s s fogginess fogginess means it is unclear or it is confused so when we don't understand anything then how we are uh, we are very confused and uh, we say that it is unclear okay so that is called as fogginess then imperial i m p e r i a l imperial imperial means it is an arrogant or domineering way uh, so she is such an arrogant woman we say okay very she is full of anger we say some head strong lady she is we say so that is only called as in an arrogant or domineering uh, so something like dominating character that is called as domineering or arrogant is only called as imperial then linoleum l i n o l e u m linoleum is a type of floor covering used to make the floor harder and shinier so most of the people in their homes or houses what do they do they will be putting uh, there is something like matting they say so this uh, uh, type of floor which they put on their floor it is something like a covering and uh, this floor it is harder and it is very shining okay so that is called as linoleum and then mitten m i t t e n mitten mitten is uh, a type of glove worn in winter and used to keep your hands very warm especially the gloves which we wear in winter why do we wear socks and gloves in winter especially to keep our hands and legs warm okay uh, so that cold will not be affected to us so those uh, gloves uh, they are called as mittens m i t t e n mitten and then the next word is outskirts 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 means the outer parts of a city or town so usually we call them as suburban areas that means uh, we will be traveling through the city we'll be going on going on into the city and uh, slowly we will be uh, crossing the uh, outskirts okay uh, that means we cross the city and we go into uh, the city is called as the urban area and uh, once we cross the urban area that is called as suburban area the suburban area is only called as outskirts then the next word is petunia p e t u n i a petunia petunia means it is a flower with white purple or red leaves so a flower uh, with where you have three colors here that is white purple or red leaves so that flower is only called as petunia and uh, the next uh, one is potted p o t t e d potted potted means grown in a flower pot so we have so many uh, flower pots and we have a garden in each and everybody's home a little garden also we have we have at least a little uh, at least a very small number of uh, potted plants in each and everybody's house so the flower pot which is grown Uh, the the flowers which are grown in pots or flower pots they are only called as potted plants the potted plants we also give these potted plants as gifts uh, on birthdays or any other occasion then the next uh, word is propel p r o p e l to push someone or something forwards so this propelling especially it is uh, done in uh, buses or in very crowdy areas they will be pushing uh, pushing each other 
okay to push someone or something forwards is only called as propel then the next word is retrieve r e t r i e v e retrieve retrieve means to bring or get something back from somewhere so getting something back uh, from somewhere that is only called as uh, retrieve then uh, uh, something or uh, to bring uh, to bring or get something back from somewhere okay if you have uh, given your book to your friend or something then what do you do again you will be getting that is only called as a retrieving then rigmarole r i g m a r o l e rigmarole is a long rambling story a very very lengthy a long uh, story is only called as a rigmarole then shrug s h s h r u g shrug then shrug shrug means it is a gesture in which you raise your shoulders slightly and drop them used to express doubt ignorance or indifference so when there is a doubt or when there is when you are ignorant when you don't know and there is some indifference what do you do you will be uh, showing a gesture and what is that just gesture you will be just raising your shoulders like this and you will be dropping them down okay so this uh, gestures is only called as shrug and the next word is spitefully spitefully means to act or speak in a manner cruel to others so very rudely or very harshly or very cruelly when you speak to others then that is called as spitefully spitefully she acted or spoke with me you say that means in a manner of cruelty to others showing cruelty towards others that is called as <coughs> sorry spitefully and then the next word is tongue tied so what is this tongue tied tongue tied means it is too shy embarrassed or scared to speak okay so very shy uh, some students they'll be feeling very shy to speak on the stage and they f- they feel embarrassing or they are very scared to speak in the public okay so that uh, is only called as tongue tied something like an idiomatic expression too shy embarrassed or scared to speak then the next word is vague v a g u e vague vague means it is unclear or uncertain uncertain or unclear is called as vague okay uh, i am not sure instead of uh, saying i am not sure you can say it is uncertain or it is unclear or it's vague all these are the synonyms then uh, whimper whimper means it is to weakly or softly cry very softly crying is or very uh, weakly crying is only called as whimper so some uh, uh, people how do they cry uh, you cannot hear any sound from their crying they uh, they cry so softly that you can see only the tears rolling on their cheeks so that is called as whimper then the next word is white washed white washed means that which has been painted white using a solution of lime and water especially from the olden days how are they doing white washing to the walls it is not uh, today's distemper or different kinds of asian paints or colors but in those uh, olden days or from the ancient days they white wash the walls with lime lime a uh, lime and water with this uh, solution mixed together they will be white washing so that is only called as white washed and the last uh, word is it is wicker w i c k e r 
wicker wicker means it is uh, twigs that are flexible and can be woven together to make furniture or baskets so you know what are twigs so uh, they are all these twigs uh, they are broken from the bamboos okay and uh, what do they these twigs uh, they are flexible that means you can bend them and you can weave them and with these twigs you can make furniture and you can make baskets so so many beautiful uh, furniture uh, and uh, especially the cane furniture we see and the baskets where, which are beautifully woven uh, with these twigs all the cane market if we go the, or, the, or to the cane shop if you go you can see all the beautiful and the decorative items uh, or the furniture which are made with this wicker wicker or take a twigs that are flexible and can be woven together to make furniture or baskets okay uh, so today we have learned we have done the pre reading activity and uh, we have uh, learned about the author eudora welty and we have learned the glossary that the, uh, the difficult words or the hard words in the lesson we have learned each and every difficult word and uh, so i'm just going to read the first paragraph and we are going to do the rest in the uh, next video so it was uh, mid morning a very cold bright day holding a potted plant before her a girl of 14 jumped off the bus in front of the old lady's home on the outskirts of town she wore a red coat and her straight yellow hair was hanging down loose from the pointed white cap all the little girls were wearing that year she stopped for a moment beside one of the prickly dark shrubs with which the city had beautified the home and then proceeded slowly toward the building which was of white washed brick and reflected the winter sunlight like a block of ice as she walked vaguely up the steps she shifted the small pot from hand to hand then she had to set it down and remove mittens before she could open the heavy door i'm a campfire girl i have to pay a visit to some old lady she told the nurse at the desk this was a woman in a white uniform who looked as if she were cold she had close cut hair uh, which stood up on the very top of her head exactly like a sea wave marian the little girl did not tell her that this visit would give her a minimum of only 3 points in her score acquainted with any of our residents asked the nurse she lifted one eyebrow and spoke like a man with any old ladies no but that is any of them will do marian stammered with her free hand she pushed her hair behind her ears as she did when it was time to study science the nurse shrugged and rose you have a nice multiflora scenario there she remarked as she walked ahead down the hall of closed doors to pick out an old lady there was loose bulging linoleum on the floor marian felt as if she were walking on the waves but the nurse paid no attention to it there was a smell in the hall like the interior of a clock everything was silent until behind one of the doors an old lady of some kind cleared her throat like a she bleating this decided the nurse stopping in her tracks she first extended her arm bent her elbow and leaned forward from the hips all to examine the watch strapped to her wrist then she gave a loud double rap on the door there are two in each room the nurse remarked over her shoulder two what asked marian without thinking 
the sound like a sheep's bleating almost made her turn r- around and run back the old woman was pulling the door open in short gradual jerks and when she saw the nurse a strange smile forced her old face dangerously awry marian suddenly propelled by the strong impatient arm of the nurse saw next the side face of another woman even older who was lying flat in bed with a cap on and a counterpane drawn up to her chin so uh, to uh, in the next video i am going to explain each and every word and each and every line in the story so until then please go through and uh, uh, please uh, be perfect with the glossary which i taught you today so that it will be easy for you to understand in the next video thank you